Hi, I'm Ken Mogi. Brent Turner argued that intentionality is one of the hallmarks of the mind. In terms of qualia, we have sensory qualia and intentional qualia, and they feel phenomenologically different. Here's the famous stimulus of a biological motion, and in terms of sensory qualia, we see white dots in a black background, and in terms of intentional qualia, we see a man walking. So sensory qualia gives us a fundamental representation of the outside world, whereas intentional qualia represents our interpretation of it. Here, in terms of sensory qualia, we see a distribution of grayscale color. And in terms of intentional qualia, we see either a young woman or an old woman. Here's a famous hidden figure of the Dalmatian. So in terms of sensory qualia, we see blacks and whites. And in terms of intentional qualia, we see a Dalmatian if we can. Hidden figures reveal the interactions between sensory and intentional qualia. Here's another hidden figure. And it's actually a cow. It's called Dalenbach's cow. In terms of sensory qualia, we see blacks and whites. And in terms of intentional qualia, we see a cow. Here's another example. We see some fruit, but if we flip the up and downs, then we see a face. So in terms of sensory qualia, we see a distributed color and also some fruits. On top of that, in terms of intentional qualia, we also see a face. This is a famous painting by Arkimbordo. We looked into what cognitive factors contribute to the formation of the experience of AHA, and we found that a rich cognitive ecology of suddenness, pressure, confidence, and so on contribute to the formation of AHA. So there's this rich ecology of cognitive elements like tip of tongue, suddenness, surprise, delight, fluency, difficulty, and these all contribute to the formation of AHA in the one-shot learning. So it is interesting to study all these insights about our own conscious experience, but we should also keep in mind that when it comes to the metacognition of consciousness, people are different. People can have fundamentally different insights about their own conscious experience. For example, when we ask subjects about how aware they are of qualia in their phenomenal experience, some people are quite aware, some people are not aware at all. They do not have a clue. So there's a huge heterogeneity among subjects about the awareness of qualia. We might have different theories about consciousness, we tend to assume that these different theories come from different applications of logic. So it may be necessary and possible to decide which theory is good or not. However, we should also keep in mind that there's this possibility that there's a background of heterogeneity in the metacognition of consciousness itself so that it doesn't just do to focus on the theory part only. We should also take a look at the heterogeneity in the metacognition of consciousness itself, which are often missed. In visual perception, there are this argument about overflow. Some people feel that their visual experience is like in figure A, where we see visual qualia vividly only at the locus of attention, whereas the periphery is blurred. And if we feel there are visual qualia there, it's only an illusion. Other people feel that our visual experience is like figure B. There are rich uh, distribution of visual qualia in a widely uh, distributed area of the visual field. So when we ask subjects whether they agree with A or B, the answer is completely heterogeneous. So some people agree with A and some people with agree with B. There's this idea of the so-called refrigerator illusion uh, in visual perception, uh, you know, the light in the refrigerator are on whenever we open the door. So we have this illusion that the light is always on inside the refrigerator, but of course, the light is on only when we open the door. So in the visual perception, we might actually have the illusion that there are sensory qualia at locations that we do not uh, focus our attention on, but these uh, illusions just like the light in the refrigerator. So 
when we present subjects with this idea and ask them whether they agree with this idea or not, the answer is again very heterogeneous. I mentioned that uh, awareness of Korea varies greatly among subjects. Interestingly, the awareness of Korea increases with age. This uh, almost linear increase is consistent with the idea, idea that there is a person-like process and people who are not aware of Korea suddenly become aware of Korea at some stage of their life so that after this becoming aware, people have much more detailed idea about what Korea are. Of course, uh, at this stage, we do not have any evidence uh, about this kind of person-like process, but uh, the possibility is that there is an incremental learning effect in the metacognition of consciousness so that as we get older, we have access to more detailed and appropriate aspects of our own phenomenal consciousness. When people have different ideas about consciousness, we tend to agree to disagree. However, they may actually represent just local minima. It is always possible that after learning, there might be a convergence into a single genetic model of consciousness. I think there's a genuine need for building a genetic model of the phenomenology of consciousness, uh, putting together the best evidences, and also asking ourselves about our own intuition about the metacognition of consciousness so that we can have a better inner model. So in Fort Worth, I try to describe what appears to me the genetic model of the nature of consciousness. I might be wrong, but I will do my best. From a single cellular organism to a much cellular organism like the human, uh, there's overflow of information which has played a very important role in the process of evolution. So that overflow has been a common denominator of the evolution of consciousness from a single cell to a brain. In the case of humans, we have sensory modalities so that the sensory overflow is experienced as a continuum of visual overflow, auditory overflow, body overflow made out of uh, tactile sensations and so on, which is different from the nature of sensory overflow in a single cellular organism. However, despite these superficial differences, deep down there is a common denominator of the overflow as a constraint on the evolution of consciousness. The sensory and intentional quarry are topologically different in their relations to the self. Sensory quarry represents information coming from the outside into the inside of the self, whereas intentional quarry represent interpretations projected from inside the self to outside the self, so that these are topologically complementary uh, aspects of quarry. In addition to sensory and intentional quarry, we have emotions or as they appear in our consciousness, feelings of emotions. In terms of vividness and intentionality structure, the feeling or quarry of emotion seems to rise somewhere between the sensory and intentional quarry. In terms of spatial attribution, the sensory and intentional quarry tend to occupy local attribution so that at any given time, they do not dominate the whole self. Whereas emotion, like when we feel sad, is a, has a global attribution so that the self is dominated by a particular emotion and two different emotions are difficult to cause, exist within oneself. In terms of whether a quarry is experienced as massively parallel state or in a single state, there is a spectrum of different intentionality structures. Typically, visual choreo are experienced in a massively parallel manner, whereas linguistic, action-related, and emotion choreo, they tend to be ex experienced as a single state. It is interesting to ask how sensory and intentional choreo interact. Sensory choreo are organized in the visual space and so on, in terms of the intentionality structures provided by consciousness, so that the unconstructed sensory choreo are organized in 
spatial temporal uh, structure. When we discuss these things, uh, we should really not start from uh, the assumption that there's space in the first place. Uh, we should start from the assumption there's no space then, and space is created de nouveau through the interaction of the intentionality structures in the brain. This is very important because at the end of the day, the human cortex is highly convoluted structure in the physical space made out of gyrus and circus. So that the question is, how come neural activities in such convoluted physical space give rise to the spatially ordered uh, structure that we experience in a phenomenal consciousness? And this is a highly non-trivial problem. Uh, I have a conjecture that a phenomenal space might arise in a way similar to twister space as developed by Roger Penrose in which the trajectory of massless particles like the light is projected to a point in twister space. This mathematical formula makes sense in terms of describing causality in a satisfactory way, so that the way uh, conscious space is made from the activities in the physical space might be described in a similar manner. So we have the spatial intentional structures that give rise to uh, space and time structure in our phenomenal consciousness. And the linguistic intentionality structures, like the meaning of words like goodness, uh, hot, cold, bad, warm, these linguistic intentionality might have similar, but perhaps more complex dynamics common with the spatial, spatial intentionality structures. One of the interesting and important aspects of intentionality structures is their open-endedness. Um, intentionality structures that gives rise to conscious space-time can be matched with sensory qualia in its various forms so that the spatial intentionality structure is open-ended. The same goes for the attentional intentionality because we can direct our attention to any cognitive element and the same can be said about the linguistic intentionality structures because, for example, the meaning of the word warmth can refer to a cup of coffee, sunshine, or somebody's smile. So the open-endedness of intentionality structures are common denominators of this uh, spectrum of intentionality structures. Open-endedness of uh, spatial intentionality is uh, very well fitted to be aligned with the open-endedness of action intentionality. When one starts an action, it is open-ended because one does not foresee the result. So when the spatial intentionality and action intentionality are aligned together, they provide a very appropriate basis for sensory motor coordination in the phenomenological space-time. Finally, uh, Spatial and action intentionalities are subserved by emotional and semantic intentionalities so that we can understand the significance of our actions and make a better choice based on these rich and complex dynamics between these intentionality structures. So there's this problem of free will. And interestingly, uh, people who have belief in paranormal phenomena like UFO and reincarnation, they tend to have stronger illusion of free will. They feel more free about themselves. So there's this positive correlation between free will, illusion, and paranormal belief. But interestingly, uh, there's no correlation between uh, free will and paranormal knowledge, so that no matter how much they know about paranormal phenomena as a fact, they do not necessarily have a stronger free will illusion. It is considered that the emotion nurtured in the context of intersubjectivity have a very strong impact on agency. Ainswurz and Borby developed the attachment theory, which is very important in personal development. People are classified into different attachment styles based on their self-perception and 
the pattern of relations with other people. We have looked into the different communication strategies in people with different attachment styles, and we found that different attachment styles indeed lead to different communication strategies. So free will, or agency in general, would appear as a result of the ecology of emotional intentionalities, including attachment styles or paranormal beliefs, so that in order to really understand and build a good model of agency or free will, we really need to uh, describe the rich dynamics between these different intentionality structures. So I have tried to build a generic model of consciousness referring to these topics. But at the end of the day, we like to ask, what are the first principles? Why do consciousness arise from the physical processes in the brain at all? For some years, I have pursued some fundamental ideas. And one is Marx's principle in perception, which is the idea that qualia and other aspects of consciousness are coded in the mutual relationship between neural filings. This is a very different approach from the statistical approach like IIT, which is based on the idea of an ensemble. An, an ensemble idea does not refer to the mutual relationship, mutual casual relationships between uh, entities in an explicit way, but a Marx principle actually is based on the interaction between elements. And I believe that this is a right way to start talking about consciousness. Another idea I have in pursuing is the principle of interaction simultaneity, which is the idea that the physical time that passes when information is transformed from a neuron to another neuron, there's no passage in psychological time. So typically, uh, about 100 milliseconds in physical time would correspond to a moment in psychological time. So these ideas were given short description as a book chapter in the book Understanding Representation in the Cognitive Sciences, but a fuller description has been given in my book Korea and the Brain, uh, published in Japanese. Recently, I have started working on an English version of this book, Korea and the Brain. And uh, this book, uh, when it's published in English, would cover topics like uh, Max Principle in Perception, Principle of Interaction Simultaneity, Models of Free Will, and the Continuity of Subjectivity. This is a world crowd representation of the topics uh, covered in the first chapter of Korea and the Brain. So I hope I can finish the English translation in the near future and have some opportunity to discuss the ideas put forward with you. So that's my talk. Thank you very much.